Hello guys, nice to see you in my channel. Today we've got A8 default facelift 2014. There's a couple of issues we have to sort it out uh, during this. Uh, these videos are gonna show you how to fix them and also we're gonna do some service. There is some, uh, let's say, a couple of issues, uh, kind of manufacturing one, uh, which almost all uh, D4 has. Uh, but I'm gonna show you uh, step by step what's going on. Then let's start. First, I have to clean up a little bit this mess. Uh, as I got some of the parts here, I have to check what my friend supplied to me uh, and what we're gonna what we're gonna fight with them let's clean up this one first okay my table is ready uh, to receive new parts let's see what we got today Okay, then let me explain you what we're gonna do. First of all, as you see, we've got the engine oil, we've got oil filter, fuel filter, and the cabin filter. Also, we got uh, engine flush, and this small bits here is a axial pump. That's one of the common issue default. Also, there is a valve bar on this typical model. This valve doesn't exist, uh, and probably that's why it's not that common issue. Uh, I've got D4 pre facelift, uh, FSI engine V8, and I've got valve on a cl close to this uh, pump, and that was a common issue. Then we're gonna sort it out those things first I'm gonna start from this and quickly let me explain you why we're gonna change this and why that's gonna be first then what is the reason we're changing this uh, the reason for that uh, is a faulty pot on a 08 model if I could remember uh, I'm gonna show you that code a minute. Why I'm changing this one first? Most uh, common uh, issue with this car, as as you know already, is the pump. Then the pump is located just behind this plastic trim. And why I'm starting from this? Uh, only because this plastic can broke uh, and we have to buy supply new one then before I'm gonna do anything I'm gonna start from this uh, plastic trim if I need to order that's gonna take me you know few days from Audi to for sub to supply then that's that's the reason mainly why I'm starting from this I don't want to lose uh, my time and my friend time then first of all uh, that's the first things we're gonna do but before we're gonna touch anything I'm gonna do full scan uh, through my VCDS uh, to have a look uh, all the electrical components in a car and to make sure uh, we're fixing one we're not broken the other one then let's start from VCDS first and then uh, we're gonna start disassemble uh, plenum chamber Okay, then I've connected already my VCDS 
and let's do auto scan and let's see what happening and as you see we got few faulty codes let's check engine one first then we, we've got the oxygen lambda sensor bank one that's only one faulty code in the engine the other one we got 08 module which is gonna be that faulty pump and also there is the left side window defrost flap which is the one located up there and then we've got coolant circulation pump and the one i show you is the coolant circulation pump v50 if i could remember what we've got here I think this one we're not gonna touch today, but I'm just gonna show you what's going on. And we got a fuel tank cap lock, unlock, short to ground, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's see if we've got any other faults. We've got another fault here. which is trunk electric and there is a hull sensor in motor one for rear lead short to plus okay this one i'm not gonna touch as well today but mainly i'm gonna focus on the 08 module we have to sort it out the actual pump v50 and then maybe i'm gonna get some time to to find out what's going on up there Basically, I know because I, I fixed that in my car, but uh, we're gonna dismantle a few things here to get access uh, for that motor and flap itself. Then let's start with a pump first, and then we're gonna uh, go to the another to another uh, task. About the flaps, you can hear there is a noise. They try adapt themselves. But I believe the stop bumps are broken. That's why they, they couldn't manage uh, adaptations. That's why they are noisy, uncomfortable, and make some people pissed off. Okay, first what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the uh, rubber seal. And then we're gonna get access for our plastic trim it's not easy here but you have to lift it up a bit and then it's off now we're gonna take wipers arm off first there is plastic cups over here which are easy to pull up now we got access for nuts i believe it's 60 16 mil then we got number 16 socket and mm. we're gonna unscrew here the problem is if you know remove that wipers arm off recently it's gonna be difficult to take it off but once you press here it should go quite easy the one is off and let's do second one and let's press here again yeah. it's off okay both wipers are removed now we've got time for the main bit, main plastic thing. And now uh, we're gonna start to remove that plastic trim, but I think someone was already here. Look, I think the plastic is already broken. There is small thing on the other side. 
Uh, on the inner side, uh, even look, the rubber here in the corner is not attached properly, should be inside. And definitely someone was here. Let me first uh, clean up this area a bit and we're gonna try pull up. Uh, you have to pull up first corners and then gently lifting up all the rest things. We will see how it's gonna go. Hopefully we're not gonna break anything. Before I'm gonna remove the main plastic trim I'm gonna remove the uh, bolts from side one just to make myself a bit more more space okay one and the other one this one I don't have to remove completely and same on the other side this one we're gonna remove completely on side and then this one just release a bit and we're gonna get more space to lift all these bits up you see and hopefully now we got enough space to remove our plastic bit the trim is removed and as you see someone was here before there is small lip around wind skin area and some of them they are just just missing as you see part of this here is missing then we will see what my friends gonna say about this did he want to replace that or not but always that could happen to anyone look even some of these parts still there I'm gonna remove this anyway as I said someone was here before what was the reason I don't know let's see on the other side Oh yeah, we've got small things as well up there and here we've got access to our pump. Pump is located here as you see and we're gonna, gonna start investigate what's going on. Okay, now we're gonna check our existing pump. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And basically, using VCDS, you're going 08 uh, auto HVAC module. And then we're gonna do output test. And on our list, we're gonna find out the circulation pump, which is here. And then start. Once you're gonna press start, you should uh, receive some uh, a bit noise uh, from pump I'm gonna show you what that mean exactly uh, but let's press start and let's check our pump as you see the procedure is running then let's go to the plenum chamber and we got our pump here I can't even notice when I'm touching then probably that pump itself is faulty now I'm gonna connect new pump and we're gonna see how the new pump is gonna react for that test. And once a new pump is, is connected, I'm gonna show you uh, there is a spindle inside or however you, you call that. And now I'm gonna do test and we will see if our pump is gonna start pumping. Then start again. we 
you can physically see the pump working and you can notice noise and that's the basically the first method i know very simple if you got vcds but if you don't have vcds the other method is a uh, little bit different and let me show you how how it looks like and basically uh, the second method you have to start engine engine is running uh, the climate control is on and let's see our pump uh, once engine is gonna reach some temperature the pump should work our pump is working straight away as my engine is a little bit warm up before and you can notice the pump is shaking a little bit once I connect the pump to the uh, sorry connector to the old pump the old pump doesn't re react at all then definitely pump is is faulty and now we're gonna replace it okay then what, what I have to do I have to take the pump off you don't need to uh, take coolant off at the same time as this is the highest point and the coolant is gonna stay in place then for some reason you can just remove those three screws up there and remove pump itself but because i'm making some video for you then what i'm gonna do i'm gonna remove those two bolts 10 mil and then i'm gonna lift it up everything and it's gonna get a bit more better access for the screws okay our pump uh, is removed include the holder i also disconnect wipers and the other uh, plug to make me a bit more space to lift all this uh, hose up and what i'm gonna do right now i'm gonna protect by clamps here and here uh, our uh, coolant system just to prevent uh, coolant leak okay i just use one uh, lump here let me remove uh, now the hose from the pump itself the one clamp off I'm not sure yeah I got access for this one as well then I'm gonna move a little bit upward and then I can remove that uh, I can remove the hose from the from the pump itself. Uh, also, I'm gonna put something underneath uh, just to prevent the painting of the coolant uh, itself. And I, I put some piece of paper underneath, and now I'm gonna try remove that pipe. Maybe this one first. It's good to twist a bit not pull straight away but twist and pull then the hose itself it's not gonna get damaged and as you see coolant is still there then once it's removed one side i'm gonna connect new pump straight away now the other pipe which is here again i'm gonna twist that Press firmly okay don't wanna go uh, and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use uh, i'm gonna use screwdriver or maybe even by fingers i'm just gonna lift it up around okay it's going and then once i'm gonna remove i'm gonna connect straight away to the new pump old pump is off include the holder but i'm gonna deal with the holder 
little bit later. Okay, then this clamp can can be off. And now some important bits. Then I'm not sure if you're gonna see. Let me take camera in my hand. Okay, then uh, to make sure uh, the hose, this one and that one, is on a correct position. As you can see here, there is a mark, the white mark here. And also, there is a mark over here. If this is lined up, you can be sure everything is is fine. Then both holes the same. Once is this one, once this one is lined up, we're gonna uh, put our scum back, and we can put it everything back together. Okay, pump is in his own place, everything is lined up. Now we're gonna check coolant level and uh, we can delay the coat. Coolant level is still fine. We didn't lose anything. And now we can delay the coat and do finally output test a new pump on a on a car and we can see if you can notice any any sort of noise when the pump working because before pump wasn't attached and also as you see this uh, holder is attached on this uh, small rubbers which that prevents of uh, re reducing noise basically Let's remove faulty coats first to make sure everything with a new pump is fine. Obviously uh, the flap, defrost flap is gonna back anyway. But before when I remove faulty coats uh, the pump came back straight away. Then right now we got no faulty coats, then new pump fitted successful. Okay, let's see if we can perform test. We got coolant recirculation pump set up. Let's start. It's showing it's running. And now you can notice the pump working as should. You can hear noise of the water flowing. Then our fixing is success. Now we're gonna put the plenum chamber plastic back and the first thing today is done. Finger up and let's see what we can do with the rest of it. Uh, but that's gonna be a next video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.